a start. Um, to start with, I'm obliged to inform you that this meeting is being recorded and live streamed. Um, obviously, this is the first meeting of, of this board since the elections have taken place. So I will make a start with apologies for absence and substitutions. Been informed apologies from Tony Parsons and substituted by Rosemary Darnell. I think I can see this third down the road. Thank you. Um, other than that, we're all in attendance. Uh, item two is disclosable pecuniary interests. Anybody got anything they wish to declare on the agenda? No? Okay. Item three is the minutes. To confirm the minutes of the board held on the 22nd of April and the 20th of May. Can I have a proposal and a second for those? I'll propose. Okay, proposed by Simon. I'll get a second. Seconded by Heather Kidd. Thank you. Uh, item four is public question time, but we've not received any public questions. Item five is member question time, but we've not received any member questions. So I'll move straight on to item six, which is Cornovi Developments Limited Overview. And that's a presentation of Lee from Jay. Chair, actually, before you begin, can I just yes. throw a point of order on, on that? Yes. So um, this is a very brief report. And then we have a much more detailed report, which goes into many of the other developments, which is an exempt item. And as far as I can see, apart from a little bit about figures which are to do with the relationship of Shropshire Council with Cornovi, which presumably should be in the public domain, I can't really see why that report is being kept out of the public eye. And many of the comments that we may want to make about Cornovi are probably going to be about some of the items under that part, under that report. So I'm wondering if we can consider that not being an exempt item and actually doing it all in one go. Um, I think I'd take advice from some of the on that one. Yes, the exempt item really does contain some elements which have commercial confidentiality issues for Cornelia, and that's the reason it sits in the exempt part of the agenda. Um, you're right that there is a little bit of uh, weed across between the two areas, um, and of course the, the, there is interest in, in that, um, general interest I'm sure, but it's due to the, uh, the, uh, the nature of the commercial confidentiality aspects for Cornelia in terms of its business planning. Um, that uh, we kept that in the exempt part of the agenda. It's something perhaps that um, uh, following the hearing of more detail about that, uh, uh, that exempt item, perhaps we can consider for future meetings, if that would be um, of interest. That's right, Julian. We'll take that away. Yes, I, I, yeah. thank you. I, I do think it needs to be considered because it, you know we own that company, and so in terms of public accountability, we're accountable for that as much as we are for for everything else. Thanks. Right. Over to yourself, Jane. Thank you. I will attempt to share. That seems to be working. Uh, the screen for a presentation. So this is a, um, a brief overview of Cornelia Developments Limited and its activities for um, the Housing Supervisory Board's uh, interest. So forgive me if some of this uh, is already familiar to some members of the, the group, but hopefully it will be um, a useful general catch up for everybody. Um, so as you know, it's the council's wholly owned local housing company set up in July 2019, specifically its purpose is to address unmet housing need in the county, but also to generate income for the council, which is uh, then to support our other services. And it does that through a number of means, um, uh, and that's a key part of its function as well. Uh, but it primarily achieves its uh, goals by developing new homes for open market sale and for affordable housing. So in terms of its achievements so far, um, uh, I guess the achievement of the council rather than Cornelia is setting up the company itself, which is uh, uh, no mean feat. Um, uh, since its establishment, it has secured £49 million pounds worth of funding to enable it to deliver its programme. Um, when we talk about securing funds, what we're talking about is loans that are provided from Shropshire Council to Cornelia Developments Limited. That's the, the route for its funding. Um, it's uh, uh, established um, uh, development of housing types, it's, it's sorted out its build specifications and it's agreed that it will be delivering sustainable homes and it's developed uh, a number of different categories of sustainable homes that it will be delivering. Um, uh, there are over 90 homes already uh, with planning permission submitted or achieved. 
um, and there is a development pipeline of over 500 homes uh, which is being worked through at the moment so that's looking for sites it's establishing relationships with um, other developers partnerships with other developers talking to landowners um, uh, looking at the um, the detail of those sites and establishing how we can uh, how Cornobi can actually deliver um, those new homes on those sites its first start on site was in November 2020 um, and uh, so far it has delivered investment in Shropshire, also new jobs and uh, training opportunities through its uh, development activity and delivered some social value outcomes as well, uh, which we have been pleased to see and uh, can go into more detail later on. There are challenges ahead, inevitably, um, as there are across the whole of the um, housing uh, development sector. So the economic uncertainty that uh, has inevitably resulted from the pandemic um, uh, is something that impacts on Cornelius activities as well as any other. It's something that has to get reflected in their ongoing assessment of risk uh, on a site by site basis, but also for the, for the whole of the business. And that's something that um, as the council, as shareholder, we must be aware of. Um, planning reform um, as it comes will have an impact on Cornelius activities. That's something that we'll have to uh, consider as it, as it com comes over the horizon. Um, there are some changes afoot around introduction of things like first homes, um, around other sorts of aspects of, of planning activity, um, which will uh, impact on the way it can deliver. Reforms to the help to buy uh, system, help to buy, um, as you'll be aware, is a way of um, uh, giving people a, a leg up onto that a first run of the housing ladder. Um, enabling people to um, uh, actually have a, um, a loan so that they can um, achieve that first property purchase. So that's been something that's been a significant benefit to the house building industry and any reforms that will have an impact on the business planning for Cornegie. At the moment, it's nothing that um, is unmanageable, but it's something for us to retain an awareness of. Mortgage availability is always significant in terms of house building activity. Obviously, uh, Cornovi is building for market sale principally, um, so this is something that we have to keep an eye on. Um, and at the moment, quite a significant issue is around supply chain of materials and also labour. And that's a combination of impacts of the pandemic and of uh, Brexit. Um, these are things that uh, I'm sure will resolve themselves in the course of time, but nevertheless, there is obviously um, uh, an issue for the whole of the house building industry that um, we have to keep an eye on. And Cornovi's uh, job is to manage those sorts of um, stresses on the industry and uh, work around them in the best way that it can. So in terms of um, opportunities for Cornovi, um, there are new site starts coming forwards um, imminently. Um, there are new planning applications that are being proposed to go through and there'll be more detail on that in some of the um, reports coming up later on the agenda. Um, uh, there are uh, there is an updated ambitious business plan for the company. Um, it will be looking to um, expand its activities in various ways. And again, we'll come back to that um, later on in the agenda. Um, there are opportunities around a proposed self-build and custom build scheme and we have that on the agenda later on for uh, London Road. Um, we also have opportunities through Cornovi to be delivering uh, low carbon homes and zero carbon homes and modelling that uh, for the house building sector, the development sector in, uh, in Shropshire, which is something that we want to progress. Um, there are uh, proposals for Cornobi to contemplate uh, working in the private rental sector, so some of the homes that they develop being made available for private rent rather than just for sale. Again, that's uh, seeking to address some of the council's priorities around giving a whole menu of good quality housing solutions within the county, um, rather than assuming that it's, it's only um, properties for sale which are relevant. Um, and just through the activities of the company, all of that we're seeking uh, to see as an investment in our local economy. So we are anticipating that Core Navy will be using a lot of uh, local labour, local supply chains, local businesses and companies to deliver its activities. And that therefore is maintaining that, uh, that um, uh, funding in our local economy in Shropshire. I'll just reference here uh, to finish off the Council's housing strategy that was agreed in January, um, just, to, just to point out how Core Navy is actually helping us as the Council to deliver on uh, what our agreed housing priorities are, which are about meeting those overall 
housing needs, which is very much um, the, the focus of Cornovi's activities. Um, and also um, this point about uh, people whose housing needs are not met through the existing local open market housing. Um, one of the key focuses for Cornovi is to deliver some of those entry level homes for sale. So we typically pretend to see that developers will as you would expect, want to maximise their profits on sites wherever they can, and that will often drive them to be delivering sort of the larger executive homes, um, which may be out of the reach of, of uh, people who are buying for the first time and families, etc. So this is the uh, point of the market in which we want Cornoby to be focusing principally, and that's what they are doing at the moment. Um, uh, with the affordable housing element that they're delivering through their activities, they are also able to help the council to um, address the issues of homelessness and affordable housing um, opportunity. Um, uh, Cornell is making a point of, of uh, either meeting or exceeding the council's affordable housing um, standards um, as required through our local plan. Um, this will always be a, a a point of discussion on every individual site because each site will have its own pressures in terms of viability, affordability, but um, it's something that so far Cornell has been able to um, uh, achieve on its planning applications. Um, we want to make sure people access a mix of housing options and again some of the thoughts that we have around uh, private sector um, uh, uh, activity from Cornell we help to sort of add that to, to the menu. Um, uh, minimising the environmental impact is very much something that we're uh, wanting Cornelia to pay attention to and their low carbon homes help to uh, create that outcome for us. And the drive for economic growth, again, trying to create that sort of entry level housing uh, for households to access across the county is something that does support our, our local businesses and industries as well. So we want to have people who will settle in the county, be able to come and pick up jobs and employment in the county, we need to be providing uh, a range of housing opportunities for them to be able to do so. Um, so uh, that's how we see Cornelia delivering against the council's housing priorities uh, as set out in our strategy. Um, that's that presentation from me, so I'm happy to take any questions. Has anybody got any questions on the back of that? Yes. Um, uh, yes, I just wanted to ask about the rental um, possibilities within Cornelia. Is that planned to be a sort of in-house division or, or a third party set up or, or what? Uh, it's yet to be finalised, is, is the truth of it. It's something that's that's very much exploratory at the moment. Um, and there are discussions about the structure of Cornelia and how it would be able to uh, take on something like that. Uh, but it's something that's an ambition that's uh, been set out and discussed at Cornelia's board. And it's something from the council's perspective that um, that we would support. So it's, it remains to be established as the answer to that. OK, thanks for being. Thank you. Uh, two questions, but one about um, about uh, sustainability and the other about affordable housing. So I'll do the affordable housing one first. So um, yesterday at Northern Planning, we, we heard from the uh, Elsmere site that we that there was a reduction in Section 106 because of changing rules. Um, and we were assured that the, the, the affordable housing would actually still be coming forward. Um, and as I understand it, this is to do with changes in the affordable homes program and how we access money from Homes England and we have to become a strategic partner or something. So can we have some reassurance that, that we are still going to be achieving that over and above target? Because if we're just if we're just delivering what commercial builders are delivering in terms of affordable homes, then it begins to be questionable as to as to why bother. Um, the second is, is on sustainability. So as I understand it, we have a number of levels of sustainability and to be crude about it, you know, we go from quite sustainable to almost very sustainable. But we don't quite get to passive house. Now, I, I was not necessarily convinced about passive house myself until, until it was explained to me that not only is it about the, the standard of the bill, but it also overcomes the performance gap, which you often see in buildings, because the nature of the checking which goes through, which, which, which is applied to the passive house building, means that you know, commercially, building, building rates checking is simply is not, is not happening. But with passive house, it's actually part of the process. So it's a way of actually guaranteeing that we don't have that performance gap, which to me means there is an extra an extra reason why we really ought to be going for passive house. And we know that other places are. We know that Exeter is and not York is and Norwich is and a number of other places where you know where where, where councils are building homes themselves, they are doing it to passive house standard. So I would really encourage us to, to, to look again and to and to see how quickly we can move to that standard. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Lowe. Councillor Lowe, if you want to. Yes, I, um, so on the affordable housing point um, uh, at Ellesmere, uh, it is the case that um, there is every intention to deliver the affordable housing outputs that have been um, under, undertaken to, to happen there. Um, it is an issue with Homes England where grant funding is applied that they won't apply it to Section 106 affordable housing units. Um, so that's the reason why it's not being captured through the planning process. Uh, but there is uh, fully an intention for that to, to follow on and for those homes to be um, uh, uh, provided as affordable housing. Um, in respect of the, um, uh, the Passive House comment, uh, Passive House is a really interesting product. It's not cheap, it's not an easy thing to do, um, uh, and it's something that there was a pilot that Star Housing is initiating on Passive House, which I think would be really interesting to observe in practice. Um, there are councils around the country who have delivered some passive house, not very much, and that is because it is very expensive and because local authorities have the goal of delivering um, uh, plenty of affordable homes to meet housing need. Um, so there is a tension here really between how far you go with your, um, uh, with your um, uh, carbon, low carbon outputs versus your affordable housing outputs. In the case of Cornavy, of course, it isn't council housing, it's building houses for sale. And so uh, one of the things it has to do is, is build houses that the market will buy. So it has to build for the people who are purchasing and it has to also uh, address the council's requirement to meet housing need and build in that affordability gap between these sort of executive homes and um, uh, uh, you know, the, the gap that's not being covered at the moment by the existing market within Shropshire. For that reason, they are building a range of different um, low carbon homes, uh, as much as anything to test that market and the appetite within it, because what we don't want to do is build houses very expensively that people can't then afford to buy, that go, are outpricing the people that we actually want to serve with these homes. And it will also be a way of us just really testing that market to see how it responds. So that would be the answer to that at this point. Thank you for that. Can we just come back on the first part briefly? Just, just, in, I'm just yes, asking. Yes. So, what, what mechanism is there now to to fund those additional, mm -hmm. um, those additional affordable homes? Because, as I understand it, it requires a relationship with with the affordable homes program. And the relationship is, I was looking it up. It's a strategic partner. Are we, are we in that ball game? Have we got there yet? So I'm Harper Ray, Managing Director of Cornelby. It's a bit strange having my back to it. <laughs> Apologies, I'm not being uh, rude. Just poor seating, unfortunately. Um, I can, we've had confirmation we are now a partner with Homes England. Um, we've had the contracts which were issued last Friday and the bid for the six additional homes are being made tomorrow on Friday for the side to Ellesmere. And we've had quite a considerable amount of consultation with Homes England. So, we're expecting confirmation probably around mid-August that the funds will be secured. Thank you for that. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Thank you, mine's rather less complex. Usually, um, obviously, this was kicked around at the end of yesterday, and I was quite satisfied with the explanation given there. Anyway, um, you have just spoken about the ability or potential for self builds. Um, obviously, it's laudable um, the way that we are building these houses uh, with quality materials uh, and to the best of the affordable carbon ability of people to buy them. Uh, with a self build, will we be expecting a reasonable standard to match the Cornobi standard or will we just let them build whatever they want? Would it be possible to defer this question until we get to the presentation on self build, which is later on the agenda? Because I think we'll have lots of opportunities to talk about that. Can I ask a question? Because I've got to go and collect my husband from hospital. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, then. Um, in the early days, I was very concerned that some of the uh, properties um, that were going to be for sale um, were, if they were cheaper, they were less energy efficient. And I remember raising that. And from what you've just been saying, Jane, I think we might be going down the same route again. And actually, if we are encouraging people with less money to buy housing, actually they need them to be more energy efficient and cheaper to run. So I need assurance that we're not going to be discriminating against those people who have less money. If I can just confirm that the um, <coughs> properties being developed will be Energy Performance Certificate A. 
So that's the that's a good standard, um, and we do have a range of different um, properties available from Cornelia that's been proposed, um, which will all be of a of a good standard. Yes, but are the cheaper ones less energy efficient? They may be A, but do they not have the extras that the more expensive ones have that actually probably those who are uh, poorer could do with? That's the question. Whether they're all energy rated A is a different thing. Um, inevitably, if you were looking at a passive house, it will be more expensive than uh, something that's, that's not a passive house because they do take uh, a greater amount of labour, they take more time, they take more detailed um, review to make sure that they meet the passive house standard. So there is some truth in that, but I think you'll find that the standard of properties that are being delivered are very much at the higher end of market standards. I should hope so. Okay. Sorry for having that. No, no Any other questions from that presentation? Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Which is the Housing Supervisory Board Overview presentation. And that is Jane. Thank you. So, uh, the Housing Supervisory Board, which of course this is a meeting, um, uh, is uh, established in order to provide the Council's um, shareholder overview of the activities of Cornovi Tournaments Limited and is part of the governance structure. So that governance structure for Cornovi includes the Cornovi Tournaments Limited own board, CDL's own board. Um, it also then includes this housing supervisory board with its uh, politically balanced nine uh, council members on it. Um, uh, the shareholder representative role is performed by this board, but then there is also uh, an officer within the council who provides a shareholder representative perspective as well for um, Cornovi Tournaments Limited and attends the board at Cornovi uh, to provide that role. Um, that's Mark Barrow, who's the executive director for place at the council. Um, there is also uh, an officer group called the Cornelia Developments Limited Monitoring Board, which has recently been um, set up just this uh, year. And this is an officer group comprising colleagues from legal, from finance, uh, from the estates team, from the housing team, in order to provide um, uh, a bit of review um, over the course of the year of the activities of Cornovi and make sure that um, we are able to advise the Housing Supervisory Board appropriately and ensure that papers come here to um, alert you to anything that you need to be made aware of in relation to Cornovi's activities. Um, and the, then the Homes and Communities Department, and my role is Assistant Director for Homes and Communities at Shropshire Council. Um, my team is, is responsible for uh, the day-to-day -day oversight and communications with Cornovi Developments Limited um, and its activities. So that, that's just a description of the overall governance structure associated with Cornovi Developments Limited and where the Housing Supervisory Board fits within that picture. In terms of the responsibilities of the Housing Supervisory Board, um, it has to meet at least quarterly. Um, it can be more often than that. Uh, it uh, has to determine shareholder consent matters, so the shareholder agreement uh, in place between the Council and Cornelia Developments Limited sets out um, all of these matters. Um, it has to monitor operations and performance of the company to satisfy itself about these things. Um, this does not involve necessarily detailed day-to-day -day activities of the company, that's the role of Cornelia Development Limited's board, uh, but it has to represent the shareholders' interests in just ensuring that Cornovi is um, delivering what we expected it to do when the council first set it up. Um, so it's ensuring compliance with those council corporate objectives um, and to help it do that it will be receiving reports on company progress uh, in meeting the housing needs as we've um, discussed earlier. So uh, in order to just check the uh, governance structure and ensure that the way that it was performing was appropriate. Uh, just at the end of last year, we appointed um, Campbell to Kell, an external consultancy to do a review of the governance, and they reported in January. Um, and their report gave us some assurance that uh, the governance structure and the progress of Cornovi's activities um, was good. Um, and in particular, the, uh, the council aspect of that was appropriate. 
it did um, identify some areas for strengthening um, and it's as a result of that that the um, CDL monitoring board of officers was set up a little bit earlier this year just to make sure that there is good oversight of all the different aspects of connections between the council and core Novi. Um, uh, as a result of uh, those uh, uh, areas of strengthening required, an action plan was set out, which is now in progress, and periodically uh, the board will receive some feedback and updates on what's happening with that. That is it. Happy to take any questions. Okay, I've got any questions. Questions on that one? Straightforward. Okay. In that case, we'll move on to item eight, which is Cornovi Developments Limited Update Report. So, this is obviously the, the public part of this. Indeed, thank you. Um, so this is a report um, providing an update um, from uh, Cornovi Developments on the company's progress since the last board meeting in April. Um, and just to note that um, no new risks are arising for the council um, uh, from any of the activities set out in this report. Um, and that as things stand, uh, one of these uh, schemes in progress are being delivered within the terms of the approved shareholder agreement and loan funding arrangements. Um, uh, as the uh, wholly owned housing company, it's been progressing its five year development programme and has uh, 571 homes planned at the moment in its long term programme. And its progress at the moment uh, is regarded as sort of to be satisfactory. Um, it is growing its professional team at the moment. It recently has added a business support uh, assistant to strengthen the activities of the organisation. It continues to be monitored, as we've just described, by the Council's Homes and Communities team, um, with uh, regular updates being provided. Um, recently, Cornovi has uh, commissioned uh, a consultancy called 3DK Solutions to carry out um, a board effectiveness review um, uh, uh, following on from the review that the council undertook um, earlier this year. Um, uh, just a, a couple of things to draw out for the, the board is the intention to uh, run an uh, annual housing supervisory board and CDL board away day um, later on this year in September. The intention of this is to provide an opportunity for the two boards to meet hopefully in person um, and actually have some shared discussion about the activities of the company and a bit of joint understanding of your relative interests and uh, concerns about um, its activities and ambitions hopefully for its future as well. Um, in terms of the uh, annual review planned, uh, just to reference the fact that um, uh, Part of that will be a reduction of the board's skills matrix um, to reflect the type of business and skills required on the board. And that will come back to the Housing Supervisory Board for review as well, just for your awareness. Um, you'll be aware that the uh, company's first uh, scheme on site, the Frith, is um, on site uh, from November. Um, and there are regular project meetings happening on that. Um, uh, already in May, a joint Future Careers Insight web page was launched by Shropshire Virtual School on the Council's website involving Cornady and uh, Morris Property. And there has been work between Cornady um, and our education team to uh, support young people wishing to pursue careers in the construction industry. Uh, the first uh, phase of homes has been released um, uh, for marketing and uh, you'll be pleased to know that these have initially been offered exclusively to people in the Shrewsbury area. This is part of the intention of Cornelia to actually ensure that it addresses local housing needs rather than um, uh, being um, uh, marketed more broadly um, and already properties have been reserved off plan as a result of this to local people in the area. Uh, there is a slight delay in uh, the programme on site, currently at around three weeks. This relates back to the points referenced earlier about um, issues with supply chain, buildings, materials, etc. Um, uh, this, this is a, a risk, but at the moment, as you'll see, it's a, a limited risk in terms of delivery. And practical completion is still anticipated um, by um, May 2022. Um, so that's just pushed back one month from the original programme. Okay, so you all have that as part of your meeting papers as well. So, Councillor Hanson. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just interested on the development of the thrift. I think it's really positive that those first release of properties have been issued to first residents. 
that I'm interested to see how um, people with disadvantage, how disadvantaged people with disabilities, for example, or learning disabilities, or older people needing um, homes that are more suitable for their care needs, will they be supported through this development and have the opportunity to rent or buy? The Frith doesn't have any uh, properties for rent other than the affordable homes and those will be um, obviously coming available um, uh, as well as the, the sale homes. So there will be opportunities for people who uh, would be um, uh, allocated into those homes through the council's choice space setting system. Um, the homes for sale are uh, what we would refer to as general needs homes on the Frith. There are other schemes that uh, Cornavi is planning to bring forwards, which, which incorporates um, some bungalows uh, as, along with other sorts of uh, property types. So I hope that that will address some of those issues in terms of the um, uh, accessibility of properties, suitability for older people. Um, not all sites suit all property types, so that we will have to vary that to vary that in consultation with planning um, and on the basis of the, the potential of each individual site. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, agree. The, the point is taken that um, that range of, of needs has to be met across the, the whole of the, um, the, the programme. Harper, did you want to come in on that? Yes, uh, just to reassure the councillor that there's two bungalows on that site, one one bed and one two bed, which are both affordable and both built to lifetime homes. So they're things such as knockout panels. All of our bungalows are built to lifetime homes. Thank you. Just let you know there's nodding going on behind you, Harper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. um, I'm not quite sure. I'll go to Esther Dean and then I'll come across. Thank you. I, I just uh, just wanted to ask about the uh, business of offering exclusively to people of each other. Sorry, how, how does that work? What's the what's the mechanism? Because um, yeah. Um, yeah, very similar to a uh, section 106 um, for uh, affordable rural housing. So for the first two weeks, um, only people um, who are interested in the property can reserve from a Shrewsbury um, postcode. And then after that, those two weeks, it then goes out to a um, larger area of Shrewsbury and then to the whole of Shropshire and the whole of, um, the whole of the country. So that gives everybody an opportunity, in essence, for a four to six week period within the local area or within Shropshire to reserve one of our properties. And that's something that we're looking to do across all our sites um, just to support people locally to get on the housing ladder. We're also, we would also like to do something with the um, armed forces as well, giving them exclusivity, but that has to be decided by our boards and we're going to be discussing next week. Excellent. I have the exact same question. <laughs> you both put your hands up at the same time with the same question. I think that's okay, has anybody else got any questions on that, that part of the board? Are all these um, people buying the properties? Are they actually um, first time buyers? Or? Um, there's actually a, a mix. There's some people who have been, who've had properties previously, who have come from the, and moved into the private rented sector, who want to buy a property within Choose. But it's a lot of people from the local area who've been interested in the development, uh, mainly because of schools. So there's got quite a few uh, first time buyers. Um, and there's also people looking to downsize as well, so it's a real mix of individuals. Okay. Uh, I think the main point for us though is that um, because of the exclusivity period, um, six out of the seven um, reservations to date are all from the local area. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yes? Um, I just had another broader question. We talked about 571 homes, 571 homes over five years. How many of those will be in the genuinely affordable bracket? Do you want to flip that one? Yeah, please. Um, our current programme um, estimates that uh, approximately 25% of those uh, properties will be within the affordable um, programme. Um, we will look to hopefully increase that number, but because of the changes to the Homes England guidance, what we're not doing now is assuming grant funding with our appraisals. Um, so what we're hoping to do now is that um, once we've got planning permission, we'll then be able to work with Homes England and others to get funding in place to increase that percentage. Ideally, we would like to deliver more. We're aware within the county, extend percentage in the north, 20% um, in the south, and within the revised local plan. So uh, ideally, we'd like to speak that target. That's something that the board is committed to as well, on the basis it still makes um, asking viable. 
Can I ask this 571 houses, how many sites is, is involved? Currently 13. 13. And can I just also ask, what's the spread across the county? And I know you gave us a rough view there, but of those 13 sites, roughly where are they located? About 40% in the north of the county, um, about 50% in the centre, and then we've got two sites we're working on within the south at the moment. I can expand on that piece. And that when you say centre, do you mean Shrewsbury? Shrewsbury, yeah. Okay, we've got any other questions on that council report? No? Okay, right, we'll move on. Um, Item 9 is exclusion of the press and public, which is resolved in accordance with the provisions of Schedule 12 of the Local Government Act, paragraph 10.4, the Council's access to information, the press and public be excluded during consideration of the following items. Are we happy to? Yeah, we'll pencil move and sign in second. And we'll look to the back of the room to Shelley and we'll, we'll just have a moment just because I'll need to turn off the live thinking. 